Welcome back to the show. Today, I have uh, Ikaro, who is a legal counsel. He's been keeping up with uh, all of the latest news in, uh, regarding Ripple and XRP. So, uh, Ikaro, thanks so much for uh, joining. And I'm just going to jump right into it. There's obviously a lot of things to discuss here about what the implications are. You know, on one hand, the the court has ruled that uh, XRP is not a security, and then on the other hand, there are some uh, scenarios when it when it comes to the institution. So, what do you make of the uh, case so far? Thank you, Mikhail, for the invitation. Hello, guys. It's a pleasure to be with you here again. I hope we can have a good conversation and bring to you some clarification about the situation. So the point is, uh, as the first news uh, said yesterday, the process, the, the lawsuit, it's not over. Okay, we just have one decision, and based on this decision, uh, the judge, the court, will schedule a trial. So from yesterday till the date of the trial, it's not scheduled yet. We don't know when the trial will happen, but till the trial, until the trial happen, SEC and Ripple can achieve an agreement on this process and it will be settled down. Okay, it can happen. Or if they don't uh, achieve any kind of agreement, we will have a trial. So the actual point is, okay, the XRP token by itself, it is not a security. It's clear. It's defined on the judge decision, but it can be a security depending on how it was sold. So from the people that are launching tokens right now, from the projects that they that you guys are launching tokens, you need to be careful on how your token will be sold. Okay, you need to, to pay attention on it. On the specifically on the XRP case. Uh, the judge divided, divided the sentences in, in three aspects of distributing the token. First one, the programmatic sales, that was the sales for open market on exchange or in that centralized or decentralized exchange, because she said, oh, when people are buying token on a decentralized or centralized exchange, they are not giving money to Ripple itself. They are buying from other people and they are not investing in the business itself. It's a good point. And then she said about the institutional sales and on her point, the institutional sales, it constitute a security, uh, a security title. So you guys need to be aware that if you are doing the first selling of your token or the ICO, in the ICO itself, it can be a security because of the way that you are selling, not because of the token itself. So in the ICO, people buy the token and the money that people are using to buy it is going to your company, to your project. And then based on what you will do with their money, they can have, uh, they can see a value of the token increasingly and then they can collect profits. So in the ICO, if we do a public ICO, you will be facing uh, the, the regulations of SEC. You need to report and to register as public offer or, or a crowdfunding or any kind of register on, on SEC. So the easiest way to you sell your tokens is going by the private sales. When let's say the biggest part, at least from the projects that I have contact, have in contact right now, they are deciding to trying to sell the tokens or to raise money uh, through VCs. And even if you have a, a normal round with a leader of the round and other investors participating in this round, in this closed round, it can be considered a private sale because you are not open to everyone. You have a minimum ticket, a minimum value that the people can buy your token. You have uh, some ICOs on the private sale. They have a minimum and a maximum uh, um, uh, amounts of token that people are allowed to buy. So we have specific conditions. And when we bring all these conditions together, we can say, hey, this is a private sale. 
okay, it's a, it is a security token. I, I will share uh, profits with people and etc. But it is a private sale. The problem is this decision brings a new uh, point of view for all the situation. Because if you have a security title, you cannot sell it on the secondary market uh, wherever the way you want. Because you need to be authorized by the SEC to provide secondary market from security titles. So this decision, it brings something new where on the first moment you can have a security, but you have a security traded in non-authorized institutions by SEC. It's strange. It never happens. It's quite common in a lot of countries on the world. Uh, for example, I'm based in Brazil. In Brazil. Here in Brazil, we have the same rule. If you are trading a security, you need to be authorized by our financial market regulations. Uh, in Europe, we have the same rule. And Middle East, we have the same rule. And I don't have sure, but probably in Asia, we have the same rule. So this specific decision, it brings to us a new point of view, not exactly on the Huawei test, because it's not changed too much how the Huawei test was applied to the, the, to the XRP, but it brings this new possibility. When you have a, a security uh, a title traded in unregulated markets. This is new. We don't know how it will be from now on, how it will happen. Uh, at least I can say uh, here in Brazil, uh, we have a different system of law. So it will not be possible here in Brazil. A judge cannot issue this kind of decision here in Brazil. But in the United States, we have another system of law based on precedents and this can be a good precedent on the united states where people uh, where projects do private icos or it means you issue your token and you organize uh, private rounds with vcs or private investors with a specific amount a specific minimum and maximum amount a specific uh, minimum and maximum amount of money and amount of token that people can buy, a minimum, uh, let's say a locked period, it's somehow normal when you're dealing with VCs and you do it on a private sale. It's already, uh, this is uh, defined on this, this decision. In the secondary market, only in legal systems as United States, where we have the common law system instead of civil law system, you can have this kind of situations where you have a, a, a legally security title traded in unregulated market. It can happen in the United States. It's not so clear. The judge don't say exactly this. Okay, you can't trade security titles in unregistered market. She doesn't sell it, tell, tell it but it is one of the consequences of the decision. I can have a private token on a private sale, a security token, and in the secondary market, I can trade it freely. I don't advise the projects to move this way because we have other consequences. For example, let's say that you have a clear uh, security token and you share the results of your project with the holders of this token and you go and and do a private sale with vcs and then you list your token in exchanges in centralized and in decentralized exchanges and then people are buying and selling your tokens in a liquidity pool for example when you share your profits the results of your project you don't know who is buying it on, on, on liquidity pools in decentralized exchanges. You can be sharing, you can be giving money from people that are doing a uh, laundry money or financing, fi financing the terrorism. So I don't know exactly how it will work. I, I don't think that 
uh, if we go to a trial, maybe this point will be discussed because the judge was not clear and say, okay, you can have a secondary market, but only in centralized exchanges. For example, if it was said in the decision, we can have more safety because, okay, centralized exchanges, they have the KYC. So if someone is in OFAC list, for example, this guy will not, uh, cannot create an account, for example, in Coinbase. It, it will not happen. But in, as the decision don't make these distinctions, this difference, in fact, it is allow you to issue your token in private sales, a secure token private sales. It's not a problem. And you can have a secondary market but people can set up liquidity pools wherever the DEX they want and wherever people in the world can hold your tokens and receive the, the, the financial results of your project. And you have the risk to be giving money to terrorists or people who are laundering money. It will be very, very complicated to you if you do it. So I don't advise projects to move this way until we have the end of this process and these points be more clearly defined. That's why you know, a lot of projects need to be already aware of the addresses that they're interacting with and are they interacting with OFAC sanctioned countries, you know, and there are solutions out there that are being developed. Uh, I'm actually working with one right now um, nice. to help uh, projects, to, to help institutions, to help companies uh, avoid that type of interaction because you know if if there's no issues at this very moment that doesn't mean that there won't be down the road because as we can see there's a lot more that's being unraveled with uh, regards to uh, regulation so uh, in regards to xrp uh, based on what the judge has ruled that it is not a security is there any chance that the SEC decides to file an appeal. I'm not really sure how the regulatory, uh, you know, how the legal system works, but is anything that has already been ruled upon, is there a chance that it could be overturned? Yes, it can, because it's just a first decision. SEC can file an appeal. Uh, we have specific uh, situations where a company can file an appeal. And this is one of them. We have just one decision. It was not taken by jurors. It was just one judge. It's not in a trial. It was in a summary trial. So it's one point that SEC maybe file an appeal to make uh, its point valid. And given the size of this case, I will not be surprised if we saw an appeal, if we see an appeal in, in a few days. What's your overall sentiment? I mean, are you kind of relieved a little bit? Like, is this a good time to be in the, on the legal side because you feel like there's more clarity that's that's happening? Or uh, is it well, it's, too early to tell? It's an exciting time to be on the legal side because we have a lot of things happening all around the world. And we have these important lawsuits in the United States. This one on every, uh, XRP, it's the oldest biggest one, but we have two Binance and, and Coinbase and we have financial market regulators all around the world uh, seeing what's going on in the United States and trying to make the better decisions based on the local countries and it's quite uh, exciting and it's good to be too because uh, different from the entrepreneurs from the legal side, we can make a better analysis of the risk. Not always the entrepreneurs, they don't do a, a really uh, analysis of the risk. And it's changing with the time because people are more aware of the problems uh, that they can have on selling tokens that are not comply with financial regulations all around the world. And we have, for example, uh, in United States, a lot of crypto projects that are deciding not to go to United States because of the regulatory situation. And uh, we, we do a lot 
of regulatory arbitrage or arbitrage. People uh, are used to do arbitrage in, in crypto in tokens, but we do uh, the same in regulatory matters. And it's good to be in the side of the disposition of the game because I, I, I see it, it the, the crypto, I see it like a, a chess game where you have a lot of specific pieces. Each piece is his, have these specific power and abilities and you need to know how to move your pieces. You need to know how to find a good marketing team because your marketing guys cannot say any kind of nonsense on the public media. By the other hand, they need to be really, really good on the safety of the accounts because we already saw a lot of accounts and projects stolen by hackers and scamming the people in Discord, for example. And you need to have really good developers because they need to put the things to working and they need to provide the higher level of safety on the tech part too. And you need to have good lawyers to understand which will be the better jurisdiction for your project and where are your markets, your users. So it's quite complicated despite we are being doing uh, dealing with a lot of uh, startups that in the first moment people say, okay, startups is a, they, they are a, an easy and small business, so it will be uh, faster and easier to set up and do the business. But on Web3, it's not the, the, the level of the game. Startups on Web3, they are really hard to run on the, the core business and on the related matters like marketing, HR, legal. It's not an easy game, but it's interesting. I like it. What do you think uh, this this case, what does it mean for uh, Polygon, for Solana, for Algorand, Cosmos, all these other uh, altcoins that have been deemed a security by the SEC? I think that this case, uh, it's a new decision. Uh, it is a good sign of for all the crypto markets because it is the first time that we have a legal decision against the claims of SEC in a big player. And I, I, I have the feeling that uh, institutionally, in an institutional point of view, uh, United States is saying, we are somehow holding what SEC is doing and we are not agreeing with everything that is going on in SEC. Okay, some things are right, but we are not agreeing on the biggest part. And right now here, when we have the power, we are saying to SEC, stop, you are not right. I think that is a really big uh, achievement for the United States because it is a message that the United States is sending to all the crypto market. It's not a definitive message yet, but it's a good message. It, it could be worse. Uh, the judge could decide, okay, it's just a security, go on with fines and et cetera, and put people in jail. It will be a nightmare and it is good. It's not the perfect decision, which everyone was expecting for, but it's good. It's a good. It's a good first step on the legal side. Absolutely, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, Ikaro, yes. always a pleasure to get your insight. Where can people find you? You can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Ikaro Avelar on LinkedIn, and if you are Brazilian or Brazilian Portuguese speaker, you can find me on on Instagram on, with Ikaro Avelar too. Wonderful. Uh, always a pleasure having you on, Ikaro. Till next time. Thanks a lot for. Till next time. For... Thank you. It's the same to be. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Absolutely.